the integral test is going to be the first of a couple of different tests that we're going to use to figure out whether a series is going to converge at the endpoints of the interval of convergence. All right, so here's what the integral test looks like. Um, it's going to be some big long <laughs> theorem to start with. Don't write this down. It's in your book. Um, I want you to just understand the idea of it, and you can write down kind of the gist of it if you want. Um, the, the important things here in the hypothesis is, uh, first of all, that they're all positive. Um, F is continuous, and F is positive, and F is decreasing. Okay, those things are important. Now, I want you to understand the difference between what this sequence is and what this function is. This is a sequence of numbers. It's discrete. There's one number and then another number and then another number, and there's nothing in between. This is a continuous function. All right, so um, here's, here's an example that will kind of distinguish the difference between these two. Um, the sequence might be the sequence of numbers 1 over n which is the harmonic series. You guys remember the harmonic series? Harmonic series is 1 plus 1 half plus 1 third plus 1 fourth plus 1 over n and so on, right? What we're going to do is we're going to use a function to represent this series right here. So we would say for this particular series, we will say that f of x or f of n is equal to 1 over x. And so if I put in any x value, any integer for x, let's say I put in 3 for x, I'm going to get the third term, which is 1 third. If I put in 4 for x, I'm going to get 1 fourth, which is the fourth term. So this function matches up with this sequence at each of the integers for x, right? The difference is... I can put any number I want in for x here. I can't put a number in like 1 and a half. I can't put 1.5 in for n here because 1.5 is not an integer. I could put 1.5 in here to this function. Right? Does that make sense? So I can put any number I want into the function. This is going to be continuous, and that's important. Um, it has to be positive, and this is an example of a positive function, and it also has to be decreasing. Um, it's possible that we would have to use a derivative to show that it's decreasing. Um, remember, to show that a function is decreasing, we take the derivative, and then the derivative would have to be negative for the function to be decreasing, yes. So if the, if the derivative is negative, then the function is decreasing. Um, so it's possible that we'll have to take a derivative to show that it's decreasing to make this integral test work. All right, so what, what this says is, um, starting at some n value, it doesn't necessarily have to be at 1, but we could start at any constant n value. Um, the series is, and the integral are either both going to converge or they're both going to diverge. And what this does for us is it allows us to tell whether or not the series is going to converge by <coughs> checking to see if this integral converges. Now, what kind of integral is this if I have infinity as the upper limit? It's an improper integral. So what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate an improper integral, and if that improper integral converges to a, a finite number, then we know that the series is also going to converge. So if, for example, the, the integral from any constant to infinity of 1 over x converges then the harmonic series is going to converge. Or, it says either both converge or both diverge. If the integral of 1 over x diverges, then the harmonic series is also going to diverge. Does that kind of make sense? Here's a visual. Here's, here's what's going on. Let's say we take, um, take a series and we approximate it using a curve. Um, what we can do is we can throw a Riemann sum on here. We can throw a bunch of rectangles on here. And if I make the width of each of these, let's say delta x here is 1, then what is the area of this rectangle right here? It's going to be 1 times whatever the height is of the rectangle, right? 
And so if my delta x is 1 for, um, well, forever, um, then the area of each of these rectangles is just the height of the function at those points. So let's say that this is like, um, say, x equals 2 right here. Then this right here is going to be f of 2. And this right here is going to be f of 3. And this right here is going to be f of 4. And so this Riemann sum approximation is going to be really just the sum of the series. Does that make sense? Well, the integral itself is going to be the total area, including those gaps. So the integral is going to give me the area of this whole thing. I didn't really hit those gaps very well. But the integral itself is going to give me the area of that whole thing. So I'm going to use the example here. I'm going to go, well, I'm going to just use n as my lower limit. Um, so if this integral here is finite, and the sum is actually an under approximation, and this is why it has to be decreasing. If it's decreasing, then we know the sum is an under approximation. So if this integral is finite, and the sum is less than that, then we know that the sum of all these rectangles is also finite, so it's also going to converge. Now, on the other hand, if we want to show it diverges, we could use the left Riemann sums, the left rectangles, and um, we would show that if the function, the integral of the function diverges, then the rectangles would be an over approximation and it would diverge. 